Liberty is set to play at Syracuse Friday night, 7 p.m. kickoff on the ACC Network. Dan Harrelson here alongside the voice of Liberty football, Alan York. Alan, thank you for coming on. How are you? I'm good, Dan. I look forward to chatting about the Flames and uh, spreading the gospel for what we do here at Liberty. Yeah, Hugh Freeze, year number three, already 3-0 three and this year. Pretty impressive win already at Troy in week two. Really impressed with quarterback Malik Willis again throughout the gates of this season. But it's going to be a, a tough task Friday night at Syracuse, obviously. A third straight year, Liberty's playing Syracuse. And then you look at the schedule next week at UAB, opening up the new stadium there. That's going to be a tough task as well. So it's, it's not an easy task going forward, but it should be a, a good measuring stick for Liberty and Coach Hugh Freeze. Yeah, it'll be a tremendous measuring stick, Dan. I think for both teams, to be honest with you. Uh, you look at uh, Syracuse and Liberty, they both have played FCS teams and beat them handily. Uh, you did mention the win two weeks ago down at Troy. That was a that was a nail-biter, uh, 21-13, to although Liberty did control most of that game uh, with the exception of a, of a late score uh, by Troy. And then last week, Liberty uh, beat in-state foe, uh, another FBS team at Old Dominion. So uh, I think it's going to be a good measuring stick for both teams. Ohio, who Syracuse played to begin the year, not a great team uh, as they transition into a new coaching staff. And then uh, week two, uh, Rutgers seems to be a, a much improved team. Uh, Syracuse beating it home to them. And, you know, Albany, you know, just you can't tell playing those FCS teams how good a team really is. And so with Liberty beating Syracuse in the Dome last year, um, I, I do know that uh, – that's got the attention of the orange and uh, Liberty's got a lot of the same guys coming back. So should be in for a, a big time game tomorrow night. I think Hugh freeze has done a, a really good job with the transfer portal, getting guys from power five conferences to transfer in. I, I mentioned Malik Willis coming from Auburn and heck he's got another year left after this year, if he wants it. And Johnny Huntley, you look at him at tight end from Colorado Skylar Thomas, a safety from Washington State. T.J. Green, a uh, running back from Utah. Caden Salter, quarterback at Tennessee. Bryce Matthews, offensive lineman from Ole Miss. And then the kicker, Alex Barbier from Penn State. <laughs> Just kind of talk about him hitting the transfer portal. And, you know, a guy like Hugh Freeze, it seems like he's always one step ahead, whether it's in-game or roster management. Dan, coaches will tell you their job is to out recruit you and, and and that's talking about their personnel they've got and so you might be on the team on a scholarship and getting a lot of reps but the coaching staff's job is to to find somebody better than you and i think just being around coach freeze the last couple of years um you know it, it is by necessity in some ways to get some talented kids that have you know um proven that they can't compete at the FBS level. But I also think, too, Dan, is that people want to come play here. Um, you know, with it being the largest Christian school in the world, some of those student-athletes want that uh, Christian environment, and they're going to get it here at Liberty. But I think Coach Freeze is a great coach to play for. His personality fits really well with his team. So, yes, there are some holes that you fill by necessity. Uh, we were very thin at linebacker last year, and we lost our main linebacker, Anthony Butler, um, who decided not to come back after graduating, and so they needed to fill some holes. And most of those uh, recruits that you talked about being FBS transfers uh, fulfill those voids at linebacker. Um, so on top of that, you know, Coach is a fun guy to be around, and so I think student-athletes are uh, – wanting to come here as opposed to, you know, having necessities to fill. So it's twofold for Liberty, but I think the, the second part about people wanting to come play here, I think that kind of gets lost um, in the trans, uh, translation of, all oh, you got all these FBS transfers, why is that? Uh, but I do think it's twofold. And you, you mentioned coming there to, to play at a school and a head coach like Hugh Freeze and, and the caliber he is, on top of uh, the Christian environment, and what's interesting about that, it's kind of like BYU with the religious background. And Lavelle Edwards did a heck of a job really getting that program on the map. And we see assistance spread out through 
and, and head coach is spread out through the sport of football from his time at BYU with his philosophies and concepts. And, you know, uh, Hugh Freeze, uh, over time, it, his different stops, he's been able to spread off people from his coaching tree. And you, you look at a program like Liberty, Going forward uh, in the future, do you think now that, because it's relatively new in the, at the FBS level, Liberty Football is, but having a person like Q Freeze run the program, have success like he has in a short amount of time, I think going forward, Liberty has a chance to be a BYU type program. What, what, do you, what is your opinion on that? Senior who passed away uh, back in 2007, uh, he said that he, he wants Liberty to be what you know BYU is to the Mormons and what Notre Dame is to the Catholics. And we played BYU a couple of years ago out in Provo. BYU actually is coming to play Liberty in Lynchburg, Virginia <clears throat> next year. So yes, I think Liberty is on the fast track. And each game we can get, like we're playing. Friday night at Syracuse on national TV just adds the exposure of the school. And if you win games like that, um, which Liberty has done quite well the last couple of years, even going back to 2017, winning at Baylor and Virginia Tech and Blacksburg last year, you know, Coastal Carolina, who was undefeated, uh, going into a bowl game last year. You win games like that, you're going to get more attention, more eyeballs, more applications for the school, uh, for the recruitment office, etc. So it all goes hand in hand with success. But yes, I agree with you 100% that this team uh, can be what those other schools we mentioned um, are to their fan bases. And I mentioned UAB next week, brand new stadium for the Blazers in downtown Birmingham. Will that be the first game in your career to, to call a game or even be at a stadium or arena for the first game to be held at a venue? Uh, looking back, I've been doing it 20 years, Dan, and I can't think of one that is going to be much as hyped as far as opening up a venue as this one will be. So I think I think it will be. Um, and again, I'm doing what research I can to uh, kind of see what the hype is about with that stadium down there. And I think Coach Clark's done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, when they you know took away the program and brought it back, um, it just goes to show you how thirsty those fans are uh, in that state. You know, those other schools, obviously in the SEC that surrounds you, um, but UAB has a place at the table, just like Auburn, Alabama, Troy, etc. So, looking forward to our second trip down to Alabama within the span of about a month. Well, Alan, thank you for coming on a, ahead of the Liberty Syracuse game. It should be interesting matchup and. Looking forward to actually being at the game next week when Liberty travels to Birmingham for that UAB game. We do as well. Can't wait for it. And uh, look forward to shaking your hand if we do get to say hello.